Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Mr. Sutton and we're here today to talk about Slot Together Products Criteria C1. All right, let's go ahead and just dive right in, shall we? So this criteria, of course, is the beginning of C, which is all about creating your solution. It's the place where normally we build things and put stuff together and create something. But of course, right now we are in virtual learning and the chance of getting back onto campus is very small. As my three-year-old would say, it's this big, this, this big, maybe, maybe this big. I don't know what the real chances of getting on campus are, so let's just assume for now that we're going to do this as a fully digital project going forward. All right, so what do we need to do? Well, in criteria C, we are going to make the standard portfolio. You are limited to one page for your criteria C1 manufacturing plan, one page for C2, where you will demonstrate high quality pictures of your completed project, one page for C3, which is a manufacturing diary where you will dim show pictures rather and explain the process of how you con constructed your digital project. And of course, C4, where you will explain changes from what you planned to what you actually made. Now, while I say you have one page for C1, if you have two, that's actually okay, but you really shouldn't need it. And while I said you have one page for the manufacturing diary, that's true, but we may or may not, depending on time, have a functional review page added. We'll see depending how that gets there. And that one should be pretty easy. So let's move on. Your manufacturing or plan for manufacture needs to have three pieces to it. There should be three parts. Part number one, you need to be able to explain how you are creating your digital file right here. And this one should be done in Adobe Illustrator. Notice how this slot together product, all of the pieces are laid out in a single sheet of paper, like a single plane infusion, right? If you were to create this, and you will, you can actually start by drawing it on paper with a pencil. This helps you make sure that you know where all of your parts will go, how big they should be, and you can actually measure them out. In fact, I highly recommend you do this. Start by drawing it on paper. Then, after you know how it's gonna look on paper, it's easier to explain the process of how you would make it digitally. Part number two needs to explain how you would actually laser cut your file if we were on campus. Now to help you with that, I've added this video here with a link. It is on YouTube, but I will also post it on MS Stream in case you do not have a VPN. Now, this video is about six minutes long, I think, but it will walk you through the process of actually how to turn on the laser cutter, the sequence, how to load your Adobe Illustrator file, how to insert your material in there, and then how to cut it. It is not super detailed, but neither should your plan be. Your plan does not have to be super duper detailed. It needs to be accurate, but it only needs to explain the major steps, the big picture things. The third part of your manufacturing plan should explain any like final cleanup things that you have to worry about, like cleaning off any burn residue from the laser, sanding it down to get rid of any potential splinters or sharp edges, painting it, staining it, anything you need to do after you take it out of the laser. These are the things that you have to finish your project up with before you sell it or give it to your client, whoever that is. So three parts, how to make it digitally, how to laser cut it, how to finish it up before you hand it away. So what will your work actually look like? Well, you know the plan, right? It's your C1 plan for manufacturing. I highly suggest you start with a basic table. Label your steps so that you have a logical sequence. You do one, and then two, and then three. Next, give your plan two columns for a description. Explain what you're doing, explain how to do it. And in those steps, make sure you name every tool and, and 
piece of equipment that you would actually use. And then finally, estimate how long it will take. Now, I'm gonna go back a slide. Think about this digital one here in the top right. Do you actually need to explain how to use the pen tool to draw these shapes? No, you do not. Not in the plan for manufacturing. What you need to do is outline the steps. Well, you need to create a new document. You need to use the pen tool to draw some of these shapes. Use the rectangle marquee to create the slots. Use the pathfinder to remove the slots. Right? Nowhere in there do you actually need to say, click here, drag to the right, measure this, then click there. That's too specific. Explain the sequence of actions, not the actual action. Right? If I was to tell you how to give you a plan for how to change a car tire, I'm not gonna tell you to put the wrench on the lug nut and turn 36 degrees and then take it off, reset it. No, 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 no. I would tell you which tool to use, where to put it, and basic how to use it. I'm not telling you how far to turn it, how much pressure to put on it. No, 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 no. Imagine another example. If I give you a plan to make a sandwich, I'm not gonna tell you, use a butter knife in the right hand only, and with a very specific motion, apply two and a half kilos of pressure. That's way too detailed, right? All I would say is, put some mayonnaise on the bread, then slice a tomato. I'm not telling you how thick the tomatoes are, I'm not telling you how many slices of tomatoes they are, I'm just saying, after you get the mayonnaise on there, put the tomatoes, then the bacon, oh, yummy. Then the lettuce and pickles, and then put a second piece of bread on there and enjoy. Right? The major steps is all we need in here. Now with those major steps, you still need to clearly label any tools, machines, equipment that you're going to use. And then as I said, estimate your time. So there's some tips down here for success. Make sure you read those and then make sure you read the rest of the instructions. Your plan needs to be good enough or sufficient enough that you could give it to somebody else in the room, in your class, and they should be able to follow it to make the solution. This assumes that they have the same level of skills as you. So if you say make five squares that are all the same size, that are five centimeters wide or in diameter or whatever, they should be able to do that. You don't need to say, click on a very specific point, drag over five centimeters, drag down five centimeters, click a second time. No, just make five squares, right? Keep it rather simple, okay? So, review the instructions. Make sure you know what you need to have, all three pieces. Watch the video so that you know how to use the laser cutter, and you'll get some terms and some words in there that are important. And then for that finishing step, you may need to do some research. Now I just did a quick Google search and I just wrote how to finish, how to clean, how to prepare laser cut projects. And I got hundreds of videos such as these, cleaning material with magic eraser, how to paint clean edges on small laser cut items, three ways to clean your CO2 projects. CO2 by the way is a type of laser that we have. That one would be very good, all right? And many, many more. But you probably already know what you wanna do also. So make sure you put it in the plan, okay? All right, once again, I'm Mr. Sutton, and I thank you for watching this quick overview of your C1 task. Reach out and let me know if you have any questions. Smash that like and subscribe button and dream on because you are the future. Okay, sorry, that was a little lame, wasn't it? Maybe, maybe over the top? Maybe just a bit. All right, see you in class, kids. Bye-bye.